And the key that they requested it from was this one right here. It has the A or N for the key that they use. Now this is useful information for me. Now throughout my time as an AWS solutions architect, I've heard a lot of stories that start with the phrase, one day we were checking out our AWS bill or I was looking through the AWS bill and I found this thing. <laughs> and so lo and behold, there I was one day in my account and I was looking at my bill and I noticed that at the very top, there was KMS keys way above all of the other services above EC2, my config services. And I had been running other things this month. So I was kind of like, what's all this KMS charge doing here? And where am I using these keys? Can I clean the keys up? Uh, yet another billing and <laughs> security resource mystery at hand. So in this lesson, I'm gonna walk through how to figure out what's going on with my KMS keys. Can I safely delete them? <laughs> and then once I've identified what they've been used for or if they're truly inactive, what's the best process to actually remove those keys? Now, starting right off, you might think the best place to go is to jump over to the KMS dashboard and see if there's any information there. And over here in the KMS dashboard, you can see I do get information about the keys. It shows me the alias and the key ID and when they were created. Um, now keep in mind, this is just the customer managed keys. If it's an AWS managed key or a service key, uh, that's kind of transparent and managed in the background. You're not gonna have visibility over those, um, nor do you have the ability to go and rotate or remove those keys either. That's part of having them be managed by AWS. And if I take a look at a particular key, like here's one I know is probably not in use anymore. This is my storage gateway, EBS is what it says. Now, if I look in the details there, it tells me that it is enabled and when it was created, but as I cruise down through here, it doesn't really tell me that it's being used or where it's being used. Now, if I take a look at key rotation, I can see that it's not set up for that. And indeed it doesn't tell me any additional info about it. So either I know what this key is, or I can go look somewhere else to figure that out. Um, but right here off of the key properties itself doesn't really give me enough info to figure out where this key is being used. And one really helpful thing to remember is that APIs drive these actions in the background. So if a KMS key is truly being used somewhere else, then there's probably gonna be some generate data key events uh, corresponding to that particular key or maybe some other activities around it, uh, such as lifecycle elements, uh, things I didn't really see here so far. CloudTrail is gonna be our best place to go to find out what API actions have been happening for the KMS service itself. And then we can look further in those details to find out if it's related to this particular key. Over here in the CloudTrail dashboard, if we take a look on the left at event history, this will give us a recap of all of the CloudTrail uh, recorded events over the last 90 days. Now that's not an extensive list, but it does give us a lot of the most recent activity. Over on the left, if we go and change this to event name, and we can take a look in the events here, we could look for something like generate data key that might be a good one. Simply going down to the event names, now we get all of the activities related to generating a data key. Now, right off the bat, they don't give us a lot of info, but if we expand this a little bit further, we can see we get some more information. It tells us that this was a KMS call. Okay, we kind of knew that already. It tells us that CloudTrail made this request. So that kind of tells us that this was a, a service related key related to CloudTrail's activities. And to get all of the details, if we take a look at the event itself, it opens up the JSON cloud trail record, which gives us the rest of the info. Most of the things I'm usually looking for are down here in the request parameters. Okay, so if we scroll down in here, we can see that somebody requested a data key and the key that they requested it from was this one right here. It has the A or N for the key that they used. Now this is useful information for me because now I can go and match that A or N up with the key IDs that I have over in my CloudTrail dashboard. So let's make a quick note here. This key starts in BA, ends in 611. If I take a look at my customer managed keys, do I have any that starts with BA? Oh, I do, BA, and there it ends in 611. So it looks like they were using this org management trail key. And indeed, this is a key that I set up for CloudTrail to use to export its logs. So that makes sense. Anytime CloudTrail exports logs, it's using this key. Back over here in the CloudTrail dashboard, you can see that it was used to encrypt this particular CloudTrail log and it stored it in this S3 bucket. So a lot of information coming together here. The problem we've run into here though is that there's no easy way to search through the event history here in CloudTrail for specific KMS key IDs. Um, even if I go in and change some of the values that are available there, they don't give me all the request parameters to search through. So we're kind of stuck. 
what we need is a more powerful way to search through all of our cloud trail records. Now, one way that you could do it is right here on the dashboard, I could go in and I could download the JavaScript object notation uh, for this particular table. Now remember friends, that this is probably a lot of information. My CloudTrail sits out there and dumps logs to S3 dozens and dozens of times an hour. So <laughs> a lot of activity and I probably don't need all of it. And indeed, as you take a look at it trying to load, look at that, holy cow, it's up to 2,000, 3,000 events. This is gonna end up being a whopping huge amount of information. So for brevity's sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and save the partial download and then I'm gonna cancel that download. Okay, and we can take a look at the files that it downloaded for us. Over here in my notepad editor, I've opened up all of that exported JSON data and it's kind of hard to read. Uh, let me go ahead and get that formatted there. Ah, great, that's a lot better. Cool, so now what we have is a flat text searchable document. And indeed, right in here, you can see all of those key references that we were talking about. Now, remember that there are gonna be a lot of records and so you might have a lot of searching to do. Back over in the KMS dashboard here, I can just go ahead and grab one of these key IDs and then take a quick search through my document to see if I can find it. Okay, now I didn't find that particular record in here. So that means that within this particular set of data, it doesn't look like that key has any activity. If I grab the one that we were looking at earlier on and search for that one, we should find some activity and indeed right away, yeah, there's an event. And there's another event, there's another event, lots of events for that particular key because this is the CloudTrail key that we were talking about earlier. So we're at a bit of a quandary here. We have some pretty good tools. We can go and look through 90 days of events. If we wanna download the data out of CloudTrail, we can work through the raw data directly ourselves depending on how much power we have available to us. But there's a much more eloquent way that we could do this. And in the background, you wanna remember that every CloudTrail log um, that CloudTrail writes, once you configure a CloudTrail, it ends up in S3. So all of those records that CloudTrail has been keeping for me, it's sitting out there filed and partitioned beautifully in an S3 bucket already. This means that we could use a service like Amazon Athena to go and run SQL queries against that data. Now we have the power of this um, structured query language to go through and pull out specific records and look inside of those contents without having to do this weird download and then <laughs> try to find a file that can open this huge database and then try to search through it. So let's take a quick look at how to make Athena do this for us. And Amazon's made a couple of nice little helpers to make that possible. Back over here in the event history in CloudTrail, they have a nice little link about running queries in Amazon Athena. And if we click on that link, they're gonna give us a nice little create table command that we can run in Athena to create a table that points to the contents of this particular CloudTrail. Now to get this right, you wanna make sure you provide the right location. So I'm just gonna grab my bucket from up here. This is the one that this trail has been configured to use. And when you put that in, down at the bottom of this, it's gonna update the location field. Now this location field is crucial and it's very important that you make a look at the path first. So it's over here in this bucket and then in there there's a prefix and then they're looking at some other prefixes inside of it. Now something to recognize is that this particular trail that I set up, this is an organization level cloud trail. So it actually has multiple accounts of records inside of it and this path doesn't actually fit properly. If we take a closer look at S3, you can see what I mean. So over here in S3, if I take a look at the CBT Nuggets cloud trail bucket, this is the one that I'm storing those records in. You can see the prefix for the organization. That looks good so far. It's got AWS logs, again, consistent. But instead of going into the account numbers, it goes to the organization ID here. And so if we take a look at our pattern, it wants to go directly into an account number. This is not going to work. And so to get this fixed, we'll have to make sure we update that when we build the table in Athena. So I'm just gonna click in here and select all of that contents and copy it over to my clipboard. And then from there, I'm gonna head over here to Athena where I've got myself ready to begin setting up a little database to contain all of my CloudTrail records. To get started, I'm gonna go ahead and create a database using the create database command. And I've just put in a friendly little name called org underscore CloudTrail for the database. All right, cool, so we'll build that database and then over on the left, make sure that I'm in that database when I set up the table. I'll start a new query and I'm gonna go ahead and paste all of that contents that we got from CloudTrail just a few minutes ago in here. So this is the entire query that they gave me over there in the dashboard. 
I am going to truncate the name of this a little bit because the name of the table is way too long. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll actually set up a table for just the one account that I want to work with. This is the account that I'm in currently, my Bart CBT Nuggets account. So down at the bottom, we're going to fix that, that broken cloud trail path by pasting in the organization ID. So if I go back over here to my S3 console and grab that organization ID, I can fix this by pasting that in right before the account number. Okay, and then make sure I put in that slash. So what this is saying is to go out and read the CloudTrail records that are found at this specific path for this organization and then for this particular account number. Now in the background, I've looked up my account number. This is the correct one for my BART CBT Nuggets account. So this is good. This is all set up correct and I'll go ahead and run the query. Great, so now I have that table built. If I wanted to set it up for the other accounts that I have in my environment, I could grab those other account numbers. Like this one here, I can grab this account number and run that same build command, but I'll just replace the account number in here this time. So this will look at a different account worth of logs and I will call this my, I'll just call this my other, I'll call this my account two, and we'll run that query. Over on the left, you'll notice that it's building these little tables for me. So now I have tables that are unique to each one of the accounts that I've been storing my CloudTrail records for. To actually look at the data that's inside of it, I can look at the, uh, the little ellipse here next to Bart CBT Nuggets. If I click on that, I can run a little preview and you'll see it goes and runs a select all from it. Now notice at the top, they did put in a limit 10. So it's only gonna retrieve the first 10 items it finds, but this is looking good. It confirms that it was able to go and retrieve the data and that it's providing information back as a part of that query. So we get some user identity info, we're getting the event version, um, and there are quite a few other fields if we scroll out to the right here. Yeah, event time, sources, region. This is a good chance to look at some of the data that's included in the CloudTrail records and then use it later on to set up your own particular queries for it. Over here, this one, request parameters, is the one I'd be most interested in because this contains the actual request parameter details for the CloudTrail records themselves. And this was the one that contained the actual A or N of the KMS keys I was trying to find. So bear with me here, friends. All we've been doing here is setting up a table that we can run queries against to look for the KMS keys themselves, which is our final step here to go ahead and set up a query that'll identify uh, the KMS keys that we're interested in. So the final piece of magic is to go over and start a new query and we'll go ahead and paste in a sample. I'm gonna select all attributes from my uh, Bart CBT Nuggets account table. This is just the one account. And then I'm gonna do where request parameters is like, and then in this little field here, I'm gonna paste in the key ID for the KMS key itself. So just to make sure that it's working, if I grab that key from earlier, this is the key ID that we were using, here, if I paste it in between the percents, that makes this wild cards on both sides. So it's gonna find this string anywhere in the request parameters and return us that value. Now notice at the bottom, I put limit 100. That'll give me the first 100 records. This is just to save us a little bit of time here. If you wanna do a fully exhaustive search, it could take quite a few minutes for it to finish looking through all of your CloudTrail data. Run that query. And great, there we go. So it took a few seconds for it to go through and scan and it has returned the first 100 events. I'm gonna make this full screen. Great, and indeed, yeah, it looks like we got the first 100 events and these are all of the records that contain that KMS key ID. Scrolling on over, we see they're all KMS related. So they're all from that event source. They're generate data keys, most of these. Okay, we see that CloudTrail made that request and over here in the request parameters, we get all of those details, including the key ID that we searched for. So now I can use this SQL model that I've built to go through each one of my KMS keys and search back through the entire history of your CloudTrail records. Now, keep in mind, friends, that my model that I've used here assumes that CloudTrail has been running and keeping track of this for you because by default, it's only the last 90 days. So a nice reminder, make sure you get CloudTrail configured properly and have it putting that data and storing it for you in S3, thereby making all of this fun analytic information available for you. Once you've identified whether or not a key has been used, then you can safely make a decision on what to do with it from a lifecycle perspective. Now, one of these that I'm pretty sure I can get rid of is my storage gateway key. So I'm gonna grab that key ID here, close down my query before, and I'm gonna run that same query, but I'm gonna turn off the limit this time. 
All right, and I'll just take the limit off completely, making sure to keep my semicolon at the end, and I will run that query. And it's likely to take a good long while since you're talking about all of the events for the entirety of my CloudTrail um, <laughs> records keeping model. And for me, that should be at least a year plus of data in this account. Great, so the query is completed. It took about 10 and a half seconds there. If I maximize the results here, we can see it found 14 events related to that particular key. And if we scroll over to the event time, that we get a little more complete information here. So you can see that this was uh, in 2019. It looks like they were over the last couple of months. And what I'm noticing in here is that most of the information around it is describing or managing the key. I don't see any generate data key events. So even though I did find some events in here, they're pretty old and none of them have any activity around generating a data key. That means that in nine out of 10 situations, this key is probably not being used actively for anything. It's certainly not generating encryption keys um, in the most recent past. So what I would do next is I would go in and I would deactivate this key. Now recognize you're not deleting it then. You're just deactivating it. This means that it can no longer be used in the future, but it doesn't remove the key. If you found that you needed it again, you could reactivate it and have it used to do those de-encryption or key generation practices. So from back over here in the KMS dashboard, I'm gonna go ahead and select that key. And under key actions, I'm gonna go ahead and say disable. And they're like, okay, cool. Your key is now disabled. So any future requests coming in for this particular key would be rejected as if the key is no longer available keeping in mind that it's still sitting out here idly. Now, later on down the road, once I've allowed a couple of weeks or months to elapse, you would wanna go back through and find all of those disabled keys and then schedule them for deletion. And so assuming that this was a couple weeks later, I could go back in and set that for schedule key deletion. Here they give me the ability to change when I want this key to be deleted. Now, by default, they tell you that you have to wait at least seven days Thanks AWS. So there are any rash key deletion decisions as I wildly go through trying to clean out my dashboard here. But it can go up to a full 30 days later on and Amazon will keep track of the time for you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say seven. I'm pretty confident that this can be deleted. Okay, and then it says, make sure you confirm because right at the top it says, by the way, if this stuff is encrypted, you're not gonna be able to generate new keys to un uh, encrypt the data. So it's basically becomes unrecoverable. So buyer beware, <laughs> user beware here. I'll go ahead and say schedule deletion and that'll work for me for now. So thankfully I was able to go through and find at least one KMS key that I can clean up. I would repeat this process by going through the rest of my keys and identifying where they might exist in different environments. Now, if you want to avoid scenarios like this, then a key cleanup process should be something that you would design into your um, activities or your procedures somewhere else along the way so that as keys are truly no longer in use, they are being cleaned up first by disabling and then by setting the deletion date later on through some sort of programmatic mechanism in the background. All the things you saw me doing here could be performed loosely in some fashion by using Lambda. So you could set up a Lambda function to go through and do this for you on a regular basis. Again, making sure that you're careful to go through the disable first and then the deletion process and probably best to send an administrator a list of things that have been flagged for deletion just so you can get that additional um, check off on it. Remembering that this might be different for production or development environments. All right, friends, happy KMS key auditing out there. Remember, encrypt, keep yourself safe, um, subscribe, like, and check back often. We'll see you guys out there in the cloud. <laughs>